Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. Not a lot to talk about necessarily this week. We've got a few BCS results, as well as a quick update on what's happening in JP that might influence us here in the English game. We will start with BCS. We'll start down under. 57 players at Melbourne in the first event post new ban list. So Alice restricted, Slime restricted, uh, SDS restriction changed, and MTI unbanned. Did not seem to stop Slime much because Standby Murin takes the win, followed by a Stoxel Escanor list in second, and Darcy playing Salvage Bar Overlord in third, followed by Ozkigura in fourth. So Brandon, resident Slime player, the standby list with the Mirin. Help me understand how this works. So yeah, basically you are playing the level one standby combo into the level two Mirin package. So essentially what you're doing is you are playing that stock charging combo, spawning out the back row uh, hexproof. So you have your global plus 2k, so your board is all of a sudden actually like decent size now. So it actually sits 7-5 cross turn for being a free card on play. And then basically any additional standbys you trigger at that point spawn Mirren combos into the front row. So all of a sudden you have your big massive wall board at one. And then from there you turn around and just spam Mirrens until the end game. So same thing you were doing before, just a uh, different way of getting there. Yeah, this feels like a really good recovery for the slime list. This feels like kind of the next natural step. So the plus on the level one combo is functionally a stock charge because you get to trigger twice. And you could potentially, like you said, if you hit that standby, summon another Mirren into the board. Make it easier to triple Mirren next turn. This makes a lot of sense. Kind of as the response. It wins in Melbourne. Followed by, like I said, another Escanor list. And Overlord getting one of the few tops it's gotten this season. We're gonna That's something we're going to keep an eye on is how Overlord kind of responds to these bans. Do the lack of Alice and the changes to Slime open up a lane for Overlord to be more relevant. So far, so good for that. Rest of top eight, a pair of Kanata Marines, one of which plays the Suisei package, bar standby Avatar, and that three standby Quince list that got a win earlier this month, also finishing top eight. Next up is Singapore, same weekend, 79 players, eight salvage Quince getting the dub, followed by Salvage Standby Adventure Time. Another slime list, this one running the Milam combo into the Mirren, and then Kanata Marine in fourth. Starting with eight Salvage, I thought this list was going to be so much better this season. I still think it's a really good list. I just don't think anyone's really playing it. This was the list that I was worried was going to be dominant if Bushy Road did the sweeping ban that they did in JP. I still think this is a good list. I'm a little surprised that it doesn't see more play. It's just really consistent, has a lot of cards, has a lot of fixing, almost perfect fixing. You have whatever whatever you need in your hand pretty much whenever you need it. And it also has a really solid top end. Don't know why this list doesn't get played more. Well, I think especially with you have that such a big wall at one that it made it really difficult to really respond to. I think you're just kind of missing those last key pieces to actually really deal with that and still kind of maintain those hand advantage that you really want for quince but now with that out of the way this definitely has some potential to really like stick through and actually be more prevalent than it has been so far this last weekend so i wouldn't be surprised if we see more of that going forward alice and slime were pretty definitively its worst matchups and with those definitely taken down a peg i think that the door is really really open for eight salvage to be good adventure time this is an odd list it plays into the ice king package usually you see the finn and jake top end how does this gain advantage, Brandon? How does this win games? It's really trying to play into memory compression, trying to get all those cards into memory for the Ice King. And then on top of that, once it has that, it's trying to control the game state a little bit with the standby combo to help get some mill in there, but also get your pieces ready for the end game. But we're not standing by its memory pieces to the board early, so that way you can play the Ice Kings and play it down as that one-stock healer, kind of just repetitively over and over again. So you can kind of just stay, stabilize there and then close out with that shovel back burn. Yeah, heal spam with memory compression. It feels like old slime. I can dig it. In third, salvage pants slime. 
with the level one Milam into the level two Mirren. I need our resident slime player again. Brandon, how does this one work? So this one plays that level one uh, Milam package that allows you to be able to top check and potentially add characters to hand. Realistically, you're probably playing this as kind of like almost like an off level one combo alongside that bonder. You're playing the bonder to get the Mirrens in place and get them ready, ready to go, and then just happen to plus with the Milam combo. But the Milam combo can also remove some essential zeros from your opponent's back row. So it can kind of like stall out their game a little bit and allow you to get that stabilizing effect at one that you probably would have gotten with Shizu anyway. You have less selectivity than you would have had with Shizu here, but you also have some removal that you didn't, so. Kanata Marine continues to show up. I think that it's pretty safe to say that the hits to Alice and Slime have opened up the door for Kanata Marine to be more effective. Kind of the, the one of the bigger boards now that you see come down at level 2 with the Kanata stuff, so. So maybe Kanata Marine is really back. It sure looks that way. It had three tops this weekend. On par, really, with the Oski Gura stuff. Rest of top eight, another eight standby Avatar, another Overlord, an eight standby Hollow Live, and an Oski Gura Hollow Live. So pretty diverse top eight in Singapore. Moving on to France, Oski Polka, the winner of that 61 player regional. Bar standby Toph Azula, Avatar finishing second. Azure Lane gets another top with Pants Bar. And Oski Gura comes in fourth. Oski Polka. We're seeing more of the Polka stuff. We've talked about this before. This one is also playing into the Luna stuff. It's also playing the Sakura Miko back row. Brainstormer. That also heals. So trying to get big. Trying to win board. Lots of tech level threes. We're seeing this list more and more, and I think that, again, this is another one of those lists that the ban might help kind of bring up from those middling tiers up closer to the top. Avatar, another beneficiary with the top list into the Azula, kind of, you know, we talked about Kanata Marine kind of being better in this meta. Toph Azula, very similar kind of build, so it makes sense that that would also see a rise in results. Azure Lane, this is another kind of variant that uses that level zero to soul package oh it's definitely soul rush it's soul rush all the way through realistically because you're still relying on cats the bonding to be able to go back and forth to make sure we have those on field at zero like the ability to just kind of play into those right away and keep those going is very much right there the level one combo is a cigarettes combo but also can pump up soul to itself it gets that soul based off of what you salvage kind of the idea like similar to that ichika that it allows you to bounce characters when you salvage a level three if you salvage a level two or higher you're able to plus one soul so essentially, you're able to effectively continue to push soul throughout the game, especially early, and that's going to lead you into that end game, that end game being that combo with a pay one, pitch one to burn two, just an additional way of trying to just stick damage throughout the game and just push that damage rush. Yeah, Azure Lane as a set just kind of punishes you for having a first deck, and this looks like that same kind of thing, but with more of a traditional level one into level three kind of game progression. Oski Gura comes in fourth, rest of top eight, a two-soul Mirren list, a Pants Choice Hollow Live list, the Kali combo into the Gura, another eight stand by Quince, and another Toph Azula Avatar. Again, another, just another way of trying to play the slime list without the level one Shizu, playing the Shioko two soul that almost made an appearance in a certain Hollow Live list that we won't talk about. But yeah, so you're potentially playing a two soul Shioko card that is again legal in every Neo standard set in slime just for the soul rush purposes. It's a different list, but it obviously works well enough to get top eight. The other interesting list I think is the Caligura list. I like this a lot. I prefer Caligura to Askigura for reasons we've talked about already plenty of times. Mostly it's just milling and consistent damage push in the mid game. I'm a big fan. This list pretty similar to that. You know, got 32 soul triggers. It's just doing the Gura thing, but it's doing it in more of a traditional 1k1 package. So yeah, a lot of interesting stuff from this weekend. The most notable thing, though, something we haven't talked about yet, is the fact that not a single Alice made top 8. 
when the ban list initially dropped, I saw it as a generally light touch by comparison. Could have been a lot heavier. What we saw in JP basically just nuked several decks. This one did not. I thought that limiting the Alice 2-1 to 2 copies would reduce Alice's presence in the meta, but I didn't think it was going to just completely pull it out of top 8 entirely. I'm actually not surprised to see Alice gone from top 8 here, in part because, realistically, part of Alice's like big thing was it being able to get three copies of Alice on board and like maintain board from there on out. But when you remove a copy of Alice from board, and that consistency of getting it on board initially anyway at that point in the game, you are also very much in territory when you're more likely to lose lanes faster. Yeah. In that regard. And you also are denying that ability to kind of play that defensive wall mm. without one of your wall pieces. So having that kind of opportunity there is all of a sudden very much diminished and takes away from a big part of the deck itself. And so, yes, you can technically still play Alice, and yes, you can technically still bring Alice out of one. You lose a lot of the advantage that you would have had doing that in the beginning, and I think you lose a little too much advantage to actually make it worthwhile to bring to a regional at this point. So that's it for BCS. Let's move on and briefly talk about a couple of things that happened in JP that are of interest. First, a pair of releases have been announced in JP. They are going to get Licorice Recoil Premium Booster, and they're going to get Cardcaptor Sakura 25th Anniversary. Both of those sets have English counterparts. Licorice Recoil's first set is coming to English in 2024. Cardcaptor Sakura was released as the first English original back several years ago now, and it's different from the JP Cardcaptor set. So... I think we can reasonably expect that Licorice Recoil 2, essentially, is coming to English at some point. I don't expect the Cardcaptor set to come to English because of the way that Cardcaptor has been deployed so far by Bushiroad and JP in English. So I don't expect to see Cardcaptor, but it's possible. But we wanted to make mention of both of those sets coming out in JP, definitely of interest to the English game. More importantly, I think, though, JP is making changes to its pack, box, and case numbers. These are changes that I think we can expect to see in English sometime in 2024. JP going from 9 cards per pack to 8. They're taking out a common slot. The biggest change is going from 16 packs per box down to 12. They're cutting the box price by 25%. But they're also cutting the number of cards in a box by 33%. 144 cards down to 96 cards. And they're increasing the number of boxes in a case going from 18 to 24. All of these changes mean that cases will be the same price, but will get 288 fewer cards. But all of those cards that it's going to be missing will be commons, reportedly. The expected number of double R's per carton isn't changing. That's according to Kilua. So apparently the ratios of the higher rarities not going to be changed by this. At least the double R ratios won't be changed. Number of commons will be decreased significantly in a case. Probably isn't going to affect case crackers too much because now you just have 250 fewer cards of chaff, 288 fewer cards of chaff. For box openers, this is going to be a little tougher because your odds of ripping an SP have gone down pretty significantly because you have fewer packs. Granted, the price has also come down. So in order to get the same odds to get an SP as you would get before, you would need to buy four boxes versus three boxes. And... If you're buying a single box, your odds go down significantly. So you have to, like, buy more boxes to get your odds of ripping that SP up. Probably kind of the intended effect is that they're trying to get people to buy more boxes, really trying to get people to buy more cases. Your double R odds have gone down. Your double R's per box, I should say, have gone down. Your SP odds have gone down per box. So they're, they're basically trying to get you to buy more lottery tickets that have a lesser chance of hitting your SP unless you buy, you know, back up to, and you can't buy the same, you can't spend the same amount of money as you do. You have to spend more money to get clear of your old odds threshold, essentially. So, like, they're trying to get people to buy more boxes. Like, that's the point. Is they're trying to get people to buy more boxes, and they're trying to print fewer actual pieces of cardboard. Losing the common, the extra common slot in the pack 
probably not going to affect most people. Might be a little bit annoying if you're opening boxes trying to complete your set, because it means now you're not going to get as many of your bolt commons that you want. But if you're opening a case, it doesn't really affect much of anything. And if you're opening a pack, you have one fewer common that you, you know, it's a common, right? So you're not losing a ton of value off the pack. Prices of packs and cartons haven't changed. Overall, the box openers are the ones who lose on this. They're the ones who take the biggest hit on this, I think. But Bushy Road is going to be able to print 10% less than they had to before to fill a case. And the cases don't really lose much value because a stack of 250 bolt commons doesn't carry a whole lot of market value. That change is almost certainly coming to English, but it is what it is. But it's not coming anytime soon. Yeah, it won't be till middle of 2024. Middle of 2024 is the earliest, and we can reasonably expect this change for English, I think. Just buy singles, y'all. If you're not buying a case, just buy singles. Like, that that, that advice still holds strong, and it will always. Because instead of buying a box, you could buy four copies of any double R from any new set. So, yeah, buy, buy singles. One more thing that we need to announce. December 15th and 16th, the return of the Christmas Charity Livestream. Our third year of doing this, 24 hours of something live right here on this channel starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, December 15th. We're going to have guests. We're going to have a lot of games. It's going to be a good time. It was a good time last year. We ended up raising over $700 for the Foundation to Decrease World Suck. We're working with them again, trying to raise enough money to get into the matching fund for the Project for Awesome once again. So mark it on your calendars. Friday, December 15th, 6 p.m., 24-hour live stream with us and some of our friends. We're hanging out. We're playing cards. It's going to be a good time. We will have more details as we get them. That's it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back on Thursday with Five Cards, Five Minutes. Brandon will have a deck next week. We'll have gameplay for that the following Thursday. In the meantime, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. We'll see you then.